So I recently have a conversation on Twitter about .NET versioning and when you should move to different versions. I want to talk about versioning in general, and I'm going to focus on a couple of major projects, including .NET. Let's go. Just take it easy, man. You can't handle the truth. Forget it, Donnie. You're out of your element. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. So the discussion started with an innocent enough idea about moving from .NET 6 to .NET 7 when it's released. And there were a bunch of discussions on both sides. I'll link the entire discussion below. Tim Heuer was a key component of that conversation, and I liked a lot of what he had to say. And I was arguing, maybe not arguing, but discussing the idea that you may not always need to move to that latest version. And I think that's an important idea for us to hold on to. Because software is moving faster than ever, I think there's a push to make sure that we're on the latest and greatest version of everything, you know, and that includes .NET and Java and Vue and React and Angular, even frameworks like Bootstrap. And I'm gonna discuss some of the different strategies they use and why I might not be so fast to move. Because there's really different kinds of projects out there. There's greenfield projects where you're starting a brand new project and using the latest version makes total sense there. Unless you know of a specific incompatibility, greenfield or new projects, it's kind of a no-brainer. And if you're on a larger project, it just involves more code. Most of these projects have the idea of long-term supported or the current release and what those are. In some cases, those are different. Let's start with the .NET example. I think uh, .NET is the one that a lot of my viewers are already using, so I want to kind of talk about .NET. .NET has changed their cadence so that every other version is what's called a long-term supported version. And for .NET Core, that means 18 months of support once it's been released. And for .NET Core, a long-term supported version, like .NET 3.1, they're going to be supported for three years with support and updates. Three years is longer than a lot of these others. And then in between those versions, version 5 and version 7, there's going to be what are called current releases. So when they're released, they are the current version of .NET. They have features you may or may not need, and they get one year of support. And so if you stay on the cadence of, and if you stay on that cadence of updating every time .NET changes, you're gonna be changing pretty much every year because there's a promise from Microsoft that they're gonna release a new version every year, usually November. And uh, that's gonna be true this year as well with .NET 7. And so when you look at a platform like .NET, which has settled down a lot of the features that most people need are in there or have been decided to not be brought over, both of those are the case, when you're Working with the .NET 6 project, what is going to drive you to move to .NET 7, knowing that next year you'll have to move to .NET 8, because .NET 7 will be out of support by the time .NET 8 comes out. Now, .NET 6 won't, because again, it gets three years of support, and it was released last year, so it has two more years of support. And so, when I look at .NET, I have to look at the features that are important to me. If I'm doing MVC ASP.NET development, not a lot in there except for some under the cover performance increases, which may or may not be critical to my application. But if I'm doing something like Blazor or I need some of the new features in Entity Framework, etc., moving to 7 makes a good idea. It might be worth it. And the argument here isn't against moving to current versions, it's that we have to move to these new versions being aware of how much work is involved. One of the comments that came out of this was, oh, all you have to do is change .NET 6 to .NET 7 in the proj file, and you're good. And that's true if you have a simple project. But only part of the problem is upgrading to the new version of .NET. You also have, how do you validate that everything works the way it used to? And for large, complex applications, that can be difficult. Unit tests can help. Not all organizations have them. And doing smoke tests and performance, all of that is involved in that. I would not move a large commercial project to a, the new version of any product without doing that validation step. And that can be lengthy and expensive depending on your project. And so I just want you to take a look at it and make sure you're doing the correct planning. You're not just jumping in because you can jump in. In the same way, let's talk about some of the other ecosystems where this matters. Now, something like Angular is interesting because 
every new version that comes out, and their cadence is a little more erratic than .NET, gets 18 months of support, period. So when a new version of Angular comes out, you have 18 months, and if the next version comes out before that 18 months is gone, you're kind of encouraged. And Angular and some of the JavaScript frameworks often support scripts that will convert your program from a, let's say, an Angular 11 to an Angular 12 project for you. And this is an interesting idea because, again, it still doesn't do that validation, but often that's a, an improvement that you're going to want to go through. Once a product is out of quote-unquote support, Angular is still going to supply bug fixes and security patches. So that doesn't go away if you decide to stay in an older version. Vue is an interesting one in this sort of versioning space because when uh, Vue 3.0 came out, there was a lot of discussion about which you should be using. Should be using Vue 2 or Vue 3? And a lot of the third-party libraries hadn't moved to this new way of doing things. This change from two to three was a larger change that could break some people's code, even though there was an attempt to sort of provide parity. And so they really didn't give a version of Vue that they said, this is really the current version now until I believe it was 3.2 of Vue. So it was quite a long way past that development that both two and three were considered current versions. And in fact, two was the more supported versions. They've codified their plan now so that every major version will get support until the next version comes out. And once the next version comes out, the latest point release of the previous major version becomes long-term support and it'll get 18 months from that point forward. So from when a new version comes out, you have 18 months to stay on the old version if that's what you want. But it does mean that two or three versions back will exit their life cycle at some point. And so this is an interesting approach, a lot different from .NET or even Angular in that sense, is that they start the clock ticking once a new version is available. And so you know that you have some time to, to move and change and to adopt to new features. Vue, unlike Angular and unlike React to some respect, they are investigating new tooling and new uh, programming models all the time. Though I think now that we've reached .NET Vue 3.2, That'll be less so. They're much more inclined not to break old code or not to require you to do things in a particular way. React is sort of odd in this because they kind of assume that you're going to be on the current version. So what happens in React is they don't have the notion of long-term support, at least through the documentation I looked at. What they state is that React will stop getting development when a new version comes out. I think with the assumption that everyone will move, old versions will only get critical bugs and uh, security patches. And so there's no notion of sort of long-term support versus current release or shorter-term support. It's just stay abreast of what our changes are and uh, moving to the next version is what you're going to be expected to do. So they don't usually break APIs, and so that moving of them may be easier than in some of these other web cases. And Bootstrap has been an interesting versioning experience because they really have broken backward compatibility a couple of times in their versioning history. And so Bootstrap has a committee that decides which are the long-term supported versions. They don't have an idea ahead of time, but they have an idea as releases come out whether this will become a long-term supported version. This happens on every release, and so it's a little hard to plan on how it works. And so Bootstrap is a little unique in there, but probably not as you look at smaller projects that you're using. Third parties to .NET or to Java or to certainly the web space are going to have different ideas. And when you adopt one of these, you're going to want to take a look at which of these models are going to be handled there. Because it's open source, sure, you could adopt it if it gets dropped or if it doesn't have support. But that's not really a consideration for most projects. Last one I'll talk about, because it's a little weird, is Java. So Java 17, when it was released, got a moniker of it being a long-term supported version. So it's the first time it's done this since uh, Java SDK 11. So there's been this big gap, and there doesn't seem to be a plan of how to deal with current and future versions going forward, much like some of the other projects. And so just be aware that if you're working with Java, some of these interesting 
uh, complexities and how to deal with the supported nature of it are more opaque. It's hard to tell what's going to happen in the future. Some of these might be handled through support contracts versus worrying about long-term support. I'm not that much into the Java space, so please put it below if I've gotten that completely wrong, because that's possible. In fact, on all of these, if I've misread the expectation of these projects, please tell me why I'm wrong and, and let us help get the right story up front. So I want to close with the idea of some good reasons and bad reasons for always being on that latest version. And so the first pro is this feeling of sort of being left behind. Because if you do skip a major version, that means you're going to be upgrading two versions, and maybe that means more changes than you did if you hadn't upgraded to each version as it comes out. And so making sure that you're on the latest things and that you don't get confused when looking for bugs because those are for the older versions and the newer versions, that's certainly a laudable reason to think about it in this way. And the con here is that you may be introducing bugs into your working system that you're not aware of because of the way that some of these projects may work behind the scenes, you may have made assumptions about them. So you do need to reevaluate your whole system to make sure it still works in the same way and with same or better performance, because that's ultimately what we're going to want for most of our applications. Another pro I want to talk about is being able to use those newest features. In .NET, a good, good example of this is C 11. There's some syntactical sugar in C 11 that's really interesting and that you might want to start using. Or in the case of something like minimal APIs, where there's actual new features that help you architect it a little better because, frankly, minimal APIs are more evolving than something like MVC or even Razor Pages for that matter. And the con there will be if you do stay at this cadence of updating on every release, you're going to be chewing through some of your resources to do that updating on every version. And maybe that's more predictable than waiting two or three versions down the road to upgrade. Maybe not. But that is something as an organization, you need to figure out what makes the most sense. For maybe if you have one side project that's uh, written in Vue or written in React that you sort of use with a larger system, that might make more sense. But if you were going to use a large project, like you have a large Angular project, moving to the new version may be interesting and useful and even more performant. But that revalidation, if you're going to do it every year or whatever the cadence is, means that is something you're going to need to get buy-in into. You know, when you're upgrading a project and you're fixing bugs around maybe an upgrade, you're not adding new features or adding new values to allow sales departments to sell more of whatever you sell. That's kind of my instinct about it. I just want people to maintain that cynicism about a new version and not assume that the new version is going to be perfect and bug-free. At least that's how I look at it. Feel free to argue with me in the comments or over on my blog, and I'd love to discuss it even more. I'm on Twitter at Sean Wildermuth, at Sean Wildermuth specifically. Feel free to um, yell at me there. I'm open to uh, comments at any point. And this has been another one of my rants. Thanks for joining me.